In this video, we're going to look at some of the new variants of COVID that have appeared. In the Chronicle, it explains about the three newest COVID variants in the UK and the symptoms to look out for. So we're seeing the figures from the UK Health and Security Agency show that 10.8 per 100,000 of the population were recorded with the virus in the week leading up to the 14th of August. That's up from 9.3 cases per 100,000 in July 29th. One in seven cases across the country have been attributed to the ERIS mutation, while the BA286 mutation, known as Parola, has sparked alarm after being found in London on Friday, and a new subvariant of Omicron, which is yet to be officially named, has been referred to as BA6 or Pi, with scientists describing it as the real deal, reports the Mirror. So the ERIS virus, one in seven cases across the country are now being attributed to the ERIS variant as cases of the virus continue to rise across all age groups. There are a number of symptoms medics say you should watch out for as the spread continues. The main ones are similar to the heavily publicised Omicron symptoms such as a sore throat, a runny nose, a blocked nose, sneezing, a cough without phlegm a headache, a cough with phlegm, a hoarse voice, muscle aches and pains and an altered sense of smell. However, shortness of breath, a loss of smell and a fever are no longer the main symptoms. There are three other symptoms that you should look out for. Diarrhea, rashes and eye irritation. The BA286 or Parola the BA286 mutation, also known as Parola, has sparked alarm and put scientists on alert as cases start to increase worldwide. Its mutations could include dodging the body's immunity from prior infections or vaccination. Its symptoms are what you might expect of other strains of COVID, including high fever, cough, cold and loss of taste or smell. The strain was first detected in Denmark on July 24th and was found in the country on July 31st. The same date was discovered in Israel. A case in the US was detected earlier this month. So on Friday it was found in the UK, in London, uh, in someone with no recent travel history. This means that there could be significant community transmission among Britons the UK HSA said. But as yet, there is no sign that parola strain is any more harmful than those that have, you've come across previously. Although it is thought it may be more easily spreadable. Typically, viruses become less deadly as they mutate, as this gives them a better chance of survival, but it is unknown what the situation is at the moment. And the third new uh, variant is the BA6 or Pi, the new novel Omicron subvariant, which has dozens of mutations, has been detected in Israel and Denmark, and scientists back home believe it is worth keeping an eye on because of its unique characteristics. It has not been officially named, but has been referred to in the scientific community as BA6. One expert claimed that she had seen WhatsApp group chats buzzing with concern over the possible spread of the variant and warned that people should consider wearing masks again. Dr Tricia Greenhall, a primary healthcare expert at the University of Oxford, wrote on Twitter, My various science WhatsApp groups are buzzing, genetic lineage clips and diagrams flying back and forth. I understand little of the detail, but it looks like it's once again time to mask up. So here's a clip of the tweet that was given by Trisha on, which is now called X. The new strain of the virus is thought to display an unusual ability to mutate, potentially making it able to circulate more efficiently 
<coughs> infectious disease specialist Professor Paul Hunter from the University of East Anglia told the Mail Online on Wednesday that the BA6 variant had probably started spreading in the UK already. He, he added, if it isn't now, then it probably very soon will be. Another epidemiologist from the UK HSA said the new variant could be named Pi, which follows Omicron in the Greek alphabet. One prominent disease tracking expert has even dubbed it the real deal. So you can still use the interactive map to have a look at how many cases there are in your area. You can put your postcode in there to search or you can search using this interactive map which you can zoom in and out on. So for example, if I zoom in here and you can see every individual area there. So if we just click on the Newcastle area, you can see they've got a total of 29 cases in the seven days up till the 12th of august so it's now the 21st of august so it hasn't it's um hasn't updated it to what it is right now but you can see there has gone it got an increase of 31.8 percent there and so if we go say um further south to london area so we just click on Westminster. It's got 43 cases and it's got an increase of 152.9%. So Cornwall has got 131 cases and it's gone up 111%. So I'll, the link's below if you want to have a look at that interactive map. The, the weekly number of people receiving a PCR test and positivity. Well, in England at the moment, people are not doing PCR tests. You, people are doing lateral flow tests and they're having to pay for those tests. The people who are doing PCR tests are those with low immunity, like if they're on immunosuppressants, for example. Um, those people um, are doing PCR tests and those people are getting COVID. So um, and I'm not sure exactly who are doing these PCR tests because I know a lot of places, including hospitals, have stopped doing PCR tests. Um, so, so the people who are doing PCR tests, I think, more than likely be those who are immunosuppressed. If you do have some problem with your immune system or if you're on immunosuppressants then it may be better for you to start wearing masks now rather than later because people who do have low immunity are getting infected. So this is the data on the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention for American Statistics and um, so you can see the figures here in the past week for COVID they've had 10,000 admissions and a percentage change in hospital admissions is 14.3% and then you can go through and look at the data per area so um, if you click on some of these you can see some of the increase in hospital admissions has gone up so that's 122% there in one of the counties in Texas and if you go look at some of the other ones, 300% in hospital admissions in Oregon. And you can see just by scrolling through, you know, some of these, that there's a lot of um, <coughs> extra hospital admissions, some of them. But with COVID, it starts off small and then it spreads quickly and then... Although some places might not have any COVID at the moment, you know, it, it could spread rapidly. Um, so although you might think you're safe in your area at the moment, I mean, who's to say what this, these figures are going to look like next week? Mm. <clears throat> so I'll put the link below for this site as well. So this is uh, for the, uh, the American statistics, the COVID data tracker. This site, the Worldometer, 
was a really good site before when people used to update their cases, like their the, the different countries would update their cases, and then you could see on a daily on a daily basis how many new cases there were, how many deaths. Um, but it looks like they're not updating it currently because there's. Uh, um, so if we look at yesterday. So the United States did update theirs yesterday. So there was 1,484 new cases and five new deaths. And um, other countries like Denmark's updated. But you can see most of the countries are not bothering to update it. But um, I think this may change if uh, the COVID starts getting really bad again. Um, so the world meter is another site you can look at for the cases. So that link will be below as well. So the Zoe Health Study website is another place where you can go to get figures from. So they're saying um, in the UK there's been new symptomatic cases of COVID which totaled 73,194. So you can see the graph there. It's starting to go up. And but they are predicting around 912,225 people with COVID because not everybody gets tested and they don't always get the figures. So they are predicting there's almost a million people with COVID in the UK currently. And you can see the red areas there. And you can click on these as well. So it is worth keeping an eye on these figures. It may be that it could be necessary to start wearing masks again, particularly when you're going in supermarkets or you're going in crowds. If I was you, I'd take a mask with you everywhere you go. And if you hear anyone sneeze or cough, just put your mask on straight away for now. But if these cases get, you know, if this, if they are spread in the way they are spread, and then it may be best to start wearing your mask again in the supermarkets and anywhere where there's crowds of people um, to protect yourself. We're not sure yet how serious these variants are at the moment. I do know that they are causing some deaths. Uh, I'm not sure of the death total at the moment, but um, it's something that you need to keep an eye on. So thank you for watching this video. Until the next one, bye for now.